guys so welcome back to my vlog i'm currently at work ignore my shiny forehead i am currently in the process of leaving going on break sorry for like starting this like midday but we are in the process of going on our break for about an hour it's raining outside i'm going to go return this moose because i don't need it and then what i'm gonna do is also kind of like take you with me like basically just on my break with me and then we'll come back we'll work a little bit and then I'm closing tonight so we'll close and then on top of that I have got to record a YouTube video and my podcast tonight that's going up so YouTube videos going up Wednesday podcast episodes going up tomorrow so we're getting into a schedule Monday Wednesday is YouTube Tuesday Thursday is everything else mm -hmm. yes am I crazy for recording with no jacket on and I got my hair done literally not that long ago just a little bit okay we are in the car please ignore my vest this is my work vest that i have to wear for safety purposes at my job ready to be in an office setting also could you guys like my hair i did something new i did mini twists my hair is growing really long this is a protective style that i'm trying it's gotten long very proud but we're gonna go to walmart and return the moose and um try to really just save up money because i don't need two mooses i got the camille rose moose at home but i also got the carol mother carol's not carol's sorry not your mother's moose so i don't need the not your mother's i just need one but yeah we're gonna go and go to Walmart. So let's go. Now I'm headed into Walmart. Let's go get my money back, get my money back. And then we will have like a little sit down talk in the car. Um, I feel like the Lord's put a very big message on my heart for you guys. So we're gonna just run this little, small little errand on my break and then we will have a very deep conversation about uh, what the Lord has put on my heart for you guys. Just recently, the Lord's been like, we need to expose sexual sin and pornography and lustful thoughts and masturbation. So we're gonna get into that in a little bit, but let's go return my stuff at once. So return is done. It was honestly not that expensive. It was just moose. I don't even see the price on here. 
Oh, it's only $8.20. So that'll go back on my card. Thank the Lord. I believe I need it. I don't need more, more moose than I already have. That's not for me. I don't need the moose. So, but let's go back to the office and we will have a chat in the car even kickstart it honestly like so i listened to this podcast this morning and i believe that the lord really put on my heart just being open and honest with you guys and like really getting real and vulnerable because nowadays yes it's so easy to sit here and be like oh yeah i'm so real like i'm so open but like you won't even share what you've gone through and you never know who it will help that's one of the things i've realized as just as i walk with god like it's okay to share like your past and your history because you don't know who needs to hear your story in order for you to one grow yourself but help that person grow too so um so like i really wanted to like share with you guys and i was inspired by this podcast i listened to like i said happy and healthy um talking about why she wished she waited for marriage and i think i think it's i just i just really think it's so important because I also too like wish I waited uh, for marriage. And one thing that I can say was, is I'm not mad at God for allowing those things to happen to me. Would I change a few things? Yes, but did I learn a lesson? I did. Um, and one of the biggest lessons that I learned is that my body is not my own. It is the Lord's. And having that realization that, you know, how I'm treating my body, how I'm treating myself is ultimately how I'm treating the Lord's creation. The God created me in his image. And for me to sit there and just not care do what I want, sleep with who I want, like, that's not fair, like, I'm gonna get real with you guys, like, I lost my virginity at 18, um, and I snuck around, and my mom, she's a praying woman, she is a Holy Spirit-filled, godly woman, and she didn't know, um, I didn't tell her anything, and honestly, God opened that door, for her and I to connect a little bit more on a deeper level and essentially what happened was I lost my virginity to this guy and he quote unquote love bombed me and we ended up you know doing the tango or whatever and I didn't tell my mom for like months and she asked me one night when we were having a serious talk like are you a virgin and I was like sadly I'm not and that kind of broke me and her like I wish I would have waited my mom has had conversations with me in the past before about like the importance of waiting and why you should wait but also like I never understood or deemed why it was so important to wait and in reality like I needed to like find my self-worth and self-love and i wasn't able to do that uh let me pre-position you guys okay get comfy in the car um but i never really deemed or knew my self-worth with growing up like i never valued myself um i was actually exposed to pornography at like the age of 11 and with that that kind of catapulted like you know early sex conversations and it became an addiction for me guys like i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not gonna sugarcoat i believe in being real with you guys like that became an addiction for me for years um which eventually led to masturbation and self-pleasing 
and in reality it just made it gut-wrenchingly hard because when you are like questioning about the industry and self-pleasing like you become numb to everything and like having conversations with my mom like it was just like well why do you like there's no point in getting toys like that takes away genuinely from what the lord has for us like why fake something when you can have the real thing in the covenant of marriage being that i didn't see it growing up in the covenant of marriage i don't blame that on my mom at all but i didn't have an example so i didn't know even though that was what i was being told and on top of that like i being exposed to that like that wasn't really my choice it was an accident actually like um just being on a person's phone and as a kid you're like oh my gosh you have games on your phone i'm gonna play your games and then you go searching for things and i just fell upon it and i honestly i can tell you guys wholeheartedly i never knew the value of waiting for marriage until recently as of 2021 or 2022 i didn't start saving myself for marriage until 2022 2021 because i was really like okay all i know how to do is use my body for attention and thinking that that's gonna hold on to somebody that's a lie from hell to be honest like it's not it's not gonna keep anyone it's just not gonna keep anyone um and recognizing that like i never knew the difference between love and lust as well like i didn't have like the father's love in my life that i do now to understand okay my body is to be valued it's supposed to be taken in a covenant of marriage and not like i've been abstaining i've abstained for two years and then i got into a situation talking stage whatever you want to call it relationship um around my birthday in april and once that occurred i was talking to that person enjoyed the moments that we had made my boundary line of waiting for marriage known but was essentially gaslit into having sex and thus my abstaining had stopped at that point but then having that conversation with them after ending things with them they felt guilty on their end and didn't even stop it which they weren't a christ follower themselves they weren't following god they knew of god they weren't they didn't have a relationship with him like i did and i knew better i could have said no um but also i didn't know that i was being gaslit until after the fact and so but also in that moment which was my first time experiencing being gaslit but also lied to like in realizing like i'm not playing victim but when you're having a partner if you're not equally yoked you're not going to be able to sit there and be like well why didn't you stop it well he doesn't know any better because he doesn't follow god i do i knew better and the one thing i had to realize was the fact that they aren't this example i'm the example and yes there's no condemnation in christ but now i know like walking forward abstaining from sex until marriage like it causes when you guys sit there and you think about like okay maybe i have had sex with my partner my boyfriend um for a while now and we follow god and we don't understand it i'm gonna tell you guys from my perspective I have had soul ties. What are soul ties? Soul ties are attachments. Like when you become one in sex, when you have sex, when you become one with that person and then all of a sudden you break up, they're still, your soul is still attached to that person. So you're thinking about them. You want to go back to them. Like you don't necessarily miss them, but it's the soul attachment that's tied to it. I can sit here and tell you 100% that I know that I've had soul ties attachments before. 
and I had to break those and it was a lie from hell that people thought and love bombed me and told me that they loved me when in reality they love the idea of me they love the idea of having a quote unquote Christian girl and the stereotypes of like Christian girls are the nastiest or freakiest or whatever which is the highly most disgusting thing I've ever heard in my life that is so horrible but like you have abstaining you're emotionally messed up for what for a while I just didn't trust men I didn't trust people period when they told me that they loved me I questioned it all the time like when people would compliment me like you're so beautiful you're so pretty you look so nice I love your outfit like I would be like why why do you what do you mean and I I literally questioned people's intentions with me when giving me compliments and I didn't trust people now as I get older I've learned like there's no shame I don't have any shame in my past even what's happened this past year I have no shame whatsoever and I'm perfectly fine with it I'm okay with it and the Lord's forgiven me and not forsaken me and doesn't even remember that old person and we're moving forward and I thank the Heavenly Father that my sins are forgiven and forgotten um, because if anyone's sitting there and telling you like well why don't you do this and why don't you do that like no you don't get to set these standards for me like I follow the Lord and the Lord has his standards and no one has the right to condemn you whatsoever um, and one scripture that I actually hold on to that actually let me grab my Bible and read it for you guys okay so one of the scriptures i got my bible right here um one of the scriptures um that i've held on to for like the longest time yes it's in the songs of songs or songs of solomon please wait to read that book but um it says promise me woman O woman of jerusalem by the gazelles and wild deer not to awaken love until the time is right you guys i cannot express how highly this scripture has set me in my way of waiting till marriage because I got confused between love and lust. On one end, you sit there and you're like, oh my gosh, he likes me, he thinks I'm pretty, he calls me beautiful, he says that, oh my gosh, my dress looks good on me, baby. He's examining you. He's examining the way that you look in that dress, how big your butt is, how good your boobs look. He's not looking at your heart. Whereas love, I've been learning about the father's love for the longest time this year and what love means and what love looks like in the father. And I'm a girl's girl. I love romance. I am, a, I love love. I can't help it. And one scripture that I hold on to is uh first corinthians actually chapter 13 everybody knows this scripture because it is the most popular scripture you could ever know but it speaks about love being the greatest and it says if you if i could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others i would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal if I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secrets, plans, and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, and is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. And skipping down to verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 13, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, 
and love and the greatest of these is love and i hold on to that scripture as well close to my heart because it is so important to realize that like without love you really can't do anything you can't minister to your brother or sister in christ you can't minister or share the gospel with other people you can't sit there and give to the poor or the needy or even love on your neighbor if you don't have love and i am not in any way trying to shame anyone um i want to make that very clear like i have been down that road of being addicted to pornography and you guys being very vulnerable to sex and allowing like my emotions to walk me through life and it's not it's not fair and it hurts and i understand what it's like to be hurt and on behalf of those who have hurt you as well and myself i just sincerely sincerely apologize you guys i don't think you understand like i went through such a tough time in my life depending on sex for so many things i didn't have a father figure in my life consistently in my life to show me and direct me in the way of being loved correctly but like a woman should be and i went looking for that in guys and thus i had sex on a continuous basis and contracted a sexual disease and by the grace of god i'm healed um like when i tell you i'm gonna get emotional when i tell you guys it's so important to wait because it's a scary thing when you go as a woman to the OBGYN, you've had these sexual patterns with men and you don't know what love looks like and you don't know what love is. And you get told that you have a sexual disease and it's like, well, wait, I've been careful. I don't understand. It breaks you. It breaks a piece of you off and it's like your heart's broken all over again. And around that time of my life was when I started seeking God because I was desperate. I desired love so much that I went looking for it in the wrong places. I desired to be cared for and to be cherished and looked for it all in the wrong places. I didn't know the proper way of a woman to be taken care of. And when I tell you guys, please, please wait for marriage in the end i'm single i can tell you that right now i'm single i believe the lord will send me my husband in his timing but i believe that it is going to be such a beautiful thing when i meet my husband and sex is had in the covenant of a marriage because it has done nothing outside of marriage but broke my heart it has caused bodily and emotional trauma that i'm recovering from and it yes has god walked me through it yes but it's built endurance and i would not even wish this on my worst enemy or for any female to go through that already females and males deal with such strongholds of having the desire to be married and yes god has placed that desire on your heart because he desires for us to be united with him that is why but i truly truly believe the lord has us women because we are the missing rib i believe the lord has us missing ribs waiting so we can recognize the lord's love first that way we understand the importance of being in a covenant of a marriage like for example when you are you know when it says you when it talks about oh my goodness sorry i'm trying to get my bearings it talks about in genesis for example that the lord took adam he made him fall asleep and he took the rib out of his body and created eve that is the missing rib she's the missing rib and she's made to be a helper and when it says here let me look for it it's in genesis chapter i want to say three i believe or i could be wrong i 
Let me see. Okie dokie. There it is. And so in Genesis chapter 2, it says, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, At last, this woman is bone from my bone, the rib, and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. When you read this text, it literally says the man and his wife and in the podcast and what I've been hearing lately is, you guys, I understand we desire a relationship, but God doesn't call us to be girlfriends. He doesn't call us to be side pieces, side chicks. Your other foul languages used to describe women, like that's not what the Lord calls us to be. He calls us to be wives and to wait in the covenant of marriage. And another scripture that I deem is a good scripture. Actually, I believe it's in Hebrew. I think it's in Hebrews, yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see where it is. Like, when I tell you guys, like, this has been such a heavy topic. Like, I literally just listened to the podcast this morning on my way to work. But, like, this topic, I've been not afraid to talk about. But also, it's, like, it's given me, it's given me, like, a little bit of time to really, like, process. Like, okay, he, he desires for me to speak on this because I've been through it. And I know and I pray that the Lord, I pray that the Lord is able to share this message with you guys and is able to help us recognize as women in Christ and as men, our men in Christ, like brothers, like stand up and wait for marriage because truly it is a beautiful thing to wait i mean i've seen it in my mom's relationship my mom recently got married in 2019 and her and her husband my father um they are the prime example of what it looks like to wait for marriage yes they're adults yes they have kids but like they re-waited for marriage and it's like okay like god redeems our history like it doesn't matter about our past the lord redeems our history and here it is and so another way that we should like recognize is like our bodies are not our own um in living in a way that is pleasing to god like why why should we wait it's one to protect ourselves from soul ties but also like living in a Christ-like way that pleases the Lord. And so in Thessalonians 4, it says, Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God as we have taught you. You live this way already and we encourage you to do so even more. For you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from the all sexual sin i'm gonna stop there on just verse three alone stay away from all i don't know if you are falling into temptation i don't know if you may be even sexual with your partner now um sleeping with them laying in the same bed well maybe it's okay to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that on the side and it's not i'm gonna tell you this right now I've tried the, okay, well, it's not that bad if I only do that. And it is. You're connecting emotionally and soulfully. Your spirits are connecting. And essentially, like, you're, you were in a covenant with God and you're kind of severing it. You're blocking 
the Lord's spirit from you. Like for a while, guys, after this past April, I could not hear from the Lord. And I cried my eyes out for days. Like, anyway, to continue, then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in a lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all sins. As we have solemnly warned you before, God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. I know for me, um, I grew up partially in a purity culture um, within the church. And I mean, even in schools today, like it's a very big toss up of like, oh, well, the girls need to cover up. Well, no, we also need to teach our little boys to keep them hands to themselves. And I mean, it even says in scripture, like if a man even looks at a woman lustfully, he's already committing adultery. Like when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing, not a girlfriend, not a side piece, finds a wife. The Lord equips you to be a wife in your single season. I'm learning that already, I'm learning that now. And I just, I really pray I really really pray and ask that you guys seek the Lord before stepping into another season of sexual sin like it takes self-control yes is it hard absolutely but do not give up hope and if you believe the Lord has called you to marriage pray on it I've had to pray on it all the time and don't lose hope like when the enemy tries to get into your ear about like, oh, well, you're, you're this, you're that, your mistakes, you slept with this person, you did that with this person, like, cast that out. Like, I'm sorry, like, my mindset going forward literally has been Satan cannot talk to me. His little goonies, little gnats, little bugs that want to yep, yep, yep in your ear. They cannot talk to you because those are the ones that got kicked out of heaven plain and simple don't allow someone who quite literally didn't want to follow the lord try to dictate how to not live by the lord like the lord doesn't sit there and is like you shouldn't do this and do that and do this because i said so no like no god's like everything is breaking your heart and i see that and i do not want you to be hurt anymore please don't do it like, I don't want you to be hurt anymore. I don't want you to be brokenhearted. I don't want you to sit there and cry your eyes out over this boy who doesn't even know how to be a man yet. It's not worth it. Like, there comes a time where you have to also look at yourself and recognize how much do you love yourself? Do you love yourself the way that the Lord loves you? Because the Lord calls you son or daughter the lord calls you beautiful like genuinely he says in scripture you are beautifully and wonderfully made you are made in the image of god like the lord calls us these things like don't listen to what these people are trying to tell you and so i just wanted to pop one here and give that word to you guys i feel like it's so important to share that and podcast episode like i said will be out tomorrow this video so just to preface there is no podcast episode this video is the podcast episode so back into the video but i believe the lord is just really transitioning me into a time of really making this a strong holy spirit filled channel of leaning into his word and living a christ-like life as a woman of god so just remember guys that I love you God loves you so so much more even more than you know and I will see you guys in my next video